Praise the Lord, everybody. This is, uh, you're in the house of the Lord, Dixon, Tennessee. This is Thursday night with Bobby Jean. Um, uh, tonight, uh, we're going to do our best to show you what it means to have complete salvation. You know, uh, we're going to go to the Lord and we're going to ask him to help us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful that without you, we can do nothing. Lord, I'm asking for milk and bread and even meat to those that are of full age. I'm asking for your help, Lord, that we could see what you did for us when you died on Calvary and you gave us complete salvation. We thank you, Father, that we know that we are not a human having a spiritual, what is that, Bob? A spiritual experience. Thank you. We're not, we're not a human having a spiritual experience. We're a spirit having a human experience. Now, I'm hoping that we can show that Jesus, he did a complete job, not, not a half job or 99.9. .9. When he saved us, he saved us completely, spirit, soul, and body. And we're going to look a little into these things. And the first thing I want us to do is, of course, <laughs> pray and pray and pray again. <laughs> Father, we're thankful. Bring forth your word by your spirit, that every word said would be by the unction of the Holy Spirit, that you would lead, guide, and direct these proceedings. Father, that you would speak forth your word, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the first thing I want to, to show you is in Matthew 5, verse 48. Okay? It says, Be ye therefore perfect. Now, I know a lot of preachers say that you can't be perfect this side of Jordan. Let perfection only comes after you die. But that's not what Jesus said here. And when he was teaching the Sermon on the Mount... He said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So, of course, we need to see what that perfect is. So, when I looked up in the Strong's perfect, it's completeness of full age, complete in various applications of labor, growth, and mental and moral character. And I don't know how to pronounce it in the, in the Greek, but it's T-E-L-E-I-O-S, teleos, and that's perfect, okay? And I wanted to show you also that scripture, that one scripture that, that Bob really loves, and it says, we're going to go to Colossians. And I know this sounds strange and that we feel that we can't in ourselves ever be perfect. You're absolutely right. <laughs> we in ourselves can never be perfect, but it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's as we receive Christ and as we mature in him. That's what brings us to perfection. And I have taught different times on uh, the 3060 hundredfold. And of course, the hundredfold is, is to be like is to be like Jesus. As he is, so are we in this world. He he wants us to come into that that perfection, as it were, that completeness and I want to go slow enough so that you see it. I pray, Lord God, in Jesus' name, give us this wisdom. Let us see it. And in Colossians chapter 4, it says in verse 12, it says, it talks of 
Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So I looked up complete because in a lot of places when it says complete, it says perfect, but it's on the same line. It's being mature. This complete, okay, thank you, Jesus, is P-L-E-R-O. O, and it's pronounced, according to the Strongs, play ro play ro finish, a period or task, accomplish, end, expire, fill up, fulfill, be, make full, fully preach, perfect, supply, to cause to abound, to render full, to carry through to the end. To accomplish. Now, as as Christ grows in us to accomplish his purpose in us, do you see that we're as we are totally full as he accomplishes his work in us? Are you beginning to see this? I, I really hope so. And we want to uh go to Colossians chapter two. And of course, you know, I, I've studied these I've studied the book of Colossians and I, I do my best to bring to you exactly what God would have me to bring to you. So let's go to Colossians chapter two and verse 10. It says now we're going to, we're going to read verses six. Okay. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, that's in Christ Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all power, uh, the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, this is a circumcision made without hands. It said, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. So we see that if we go and have an operation, you know, by a doctor, and we know that he is the great physician. We're talking about God doing something in us that nobody I've ever known can really operate on themselves, especially a, a circumcision of the heart. <laughs> we, if we was to cut into ourselves and try to cut away, as it's called in the, this, the word, the circumcision, the foreskin of the heart, that hardness, that stubbornness. We can't do that. It takes an operation of God. Okay. So we're, uh, we're going to, well, let's read a little bit more here. Okay. It says, and you being dead, verse 13, you're, we're in Colossians 2, verse 13, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, Hath he quickened, made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or th these were religious holidays and religious things that they did. 
It said, which are a shadow. Now, those of you that have listened to Gary Gatlin's uh, teaching on the tabernacle, he broke it down and showed that all these things are a shadow of, of and actually it's, it's a picture of Jesus Christ. Okay, and as you as you really get into the word, whether you're in Genesis 1, 1 or in Revelation 22, 21, it's all about Jesus. And I know that in some of your Bibles, it may call the Revelation, the apocalypse, which means the hidden book. But in uh, Revelation, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, Revelation 1, 1. Okay, and Jesus said that I am the Alpha, verse 11. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Hallelujah. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. So I, I want you to realize that in, not in ourselves, but we can be complete in him. And as he works this operation in us, the love of God shed abroad our heart by the Holy Ghost. We know that according to First John, that that God is love. I'll take you over there. First John, First John, uh, chapter four, verse. Sorry about that. Uh, I just had to see it. <laughs> Uh, chapter 4, verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Now, in verse 16, it says, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. God is love. <laughs> and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Do you see that? As he is, so are we. Now we're, we're not ever. He is. And as he works in us, we're not Jesus, but as we grow in him, his nature can grow in by his nature in the name of Jesus, in the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see these things. God is the only one that can do this. And it's a miracle. I believe in miracles. I believe you believe in miracles. And for me, to, to come into all that Christ has, it's not a struggling in the flesh. I remember one time, and I've mentioned this, when I was uh, up north, and Lord willing, I'm going to go up north when I go to Michigan in June, but I was up north, and I was, I was reading and praying and fasting and, and, and doing my best to get my flesh out of the way because being Pentecostal, I thought it was something that I had to do. And God, in his great mercy, as I was up there, just all I did was just do, you know, read, pray, and just as all I was trying to do, I was doing my best to get me out of the way. And I do that all the time. I try to get me out of the way because you don't need me. You need Jesus. But it's an operation of God. And that's what he told me. He said, and he's so loving. He's such a, such a daddy. You know, just as a father would say to a young child, he, he just said to me as I'm struggling and doing all this stuff, he said, my power cannot be achieved. I was trying to achieve what only God can do. And maybe you are too. And I hope this puts you to rest. Not that we can, you know, quit trying and, you know, just say, okay, I'm evil and that's it. Because no, 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 that's not it. But not by struggling, not by everything that we, we can't work this up. Being Pentecostal, I've seen them turn up the amplifiers and, and uh, oh, let's sing louder. Let's jump around. Let's, you know, and we, 
we can't by struggling in the flesh. Man in the flesh cannot please God. It is an operation of the spirit. I really hope you're hearing me. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. And one of the reasons we do all this is because we're afraid. We don't look at God as the loving father that he is, our heavenly father. We don't, you know, we, we look at him like uh, some earthly dads. And let me go to Peter and, uh, okay. And it, and it says, okay, <laughs> if he will help me, okay. Okay, Lord, if you want me to bring that forth, you're going to have to help me. Thank you, Jesus. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And it says that I'm, I'm looking for the place, and maybe somebody will help me, where it talks about becoming mature in Christ, being grown up. And maybe you should look it up. Maybe I'll look it up later. It says that we had fathers after the flesh that, that whooped us according to their own pleasure. But he, for our good, the only reason that God does anything, you know, allows things is for our good. And in Romans 8, 28, it says all things work together to good. You love God. You're called according to his purpose. And all things are going to work to your good and his glory. He is working these things out. And again, uh, thank you, Jesus. I know the Lord is going to help me find it, and uh, but I don't want to take up a lot of time right now trying to find it. And for one thing, uh, as you're praying for me, pray for my eyes. <laughs> Because I, I've been really having trouble with my eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, all right. In Hebrews chapter 12, it says, Seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus again the author and the finisher the alpha and the omega the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him. Now, this is what we need to consider when we're going through all these things. And as Gary, he teaches on Tuesday night about heavens on fire and about how that these fiery trials, how this fire is not meant to destroy us. Okay. And that was another thing in Peter that it said, okay, that uh, these, these fiery trials are to bring us as gold. Okay, not, not to destroy us, but quite the contrary. Okay, <laughs> let me see. I apologize. I am really trying to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. As you can tell, these are, this is not in my uh, notes. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm going to do my best to follow him, and I am praying and I'm hoping that you're praying for me because it said in, uh, we're going to go back to Hebrews, but in, I needed you to see this in first Peter chapter one, it says who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. 
wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. So you may feel like these things. How many times? I, I know I have, and maybe you have. Lord, this is killing me. You know, this is killing me. Yes. Yes, it is, because this old flesh. Back in the Roman days, they would take a dead body, and that's what Paul was trying to liken that to, that this they would take a dead body and put it on a prisoner until that that dead body would be deaf to the to the host body well god is bringing about the death of our nature so that his nature can be can arise in us as john the baptist said i believe it's in uh, st john 3:30 it's in that area he said he must He said, I must decrease and he must increase. And as he increased in us, we decrease, hallelujah, so that we're no longer all all of this this petty, uh, fearful, uh, angry mess that we are, amen. But God puts in us a new nature, his nature. I remember my daughter came to me one time and said, Mama, Jesus was cool. And I said, well, yeah, I thought so, but why do you think so? And she took me to that story where, you know, the man was saying, if you can do anything, help us. And the boy was wallowing around, and and it sounded like he was having a seizure. And Jesus said, how long has he been like this? And seeing him have such a calm, and peaceful nature. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And she thought that was really cool. (laughs) He didn't get upset. I want you to know that God loves you, but he doesn't get upset at what you're going through. He knows that he is with you and you're going to go through it. It's through trial, through to, to victory, The children of Israel had to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. We're going through this wilderness experience to get to the promised land. The promised land is to be complete in Christ Jesus. It said, uh, and you can read more about that. It says uh, that the trial of your faith being much more precious, that's in 1 Peter 1, 7, much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So we're now we're going to go back because I want you to see this. It says, consider him, Hebrews 12, 3. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. You're going through this, but honey, your labor of love is not in vain in Christ Jesus. There is a reason. There is a purpose. A lot of times we can go through Way more if we know there's uh how many times, you know, like going to the dentist, you know, you hold your mouth open and you're in pain, but you know there's going to be a good end. And we're going through things, but we have an expected end. I was just reading that in Jeremiah uh, 29, 11 in the Amplified Version, where he said, I have a plan of peace and an expected end. He knows what he's doing in on, and he's going to be able to not just in and on you, but through you be able to help others. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, it says, we console with the same consolation that we have received of Christ. 
And it's we go through these things so that we can help our fellows. We can help others. Amen. And it says, <laughs> ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, for whom the Lord loveth. I remember my sister told me, she said, I can't get by with anything, but it's because the Lord has his hand on you. Maybe everybody around you can get by with stuff that you can't, but you're in training for reigning. We've covered that. You are going through these things and it's for a purpose. Okay, that, that is so important. It says, for uh, the Lord, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Honey, that's the word of God. Now, it, most of y'all know that a bastard is a child that is not recognized by its father. It's recognized by its mother, of course. Now, and we've seen in Galatians 4.26, Jerusalem, which is above and free, is the mother of us all. So the church may recognize you, but it, the father doesn't. Do you understand that? I, I hope we're being clear. Lord, help us. It said, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. And honey, that's not my word. That's Hebrews 12 and uh, 8. That's, that's the word of God. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? We have to submit ourselves. We have to subject ourselves. We have to realize that God is love and that he is not going to allow. Honey, if he's taken the time to count your the very hairs of your head. I remember I was, I was praying about something and uh, someone said, oh, I don't bother God with that. And so I just said, well, I thought I'd mention it while he was counting my hair, you know, and uh, <laughs> I have fried and dyed and curled and I have really, I have done stuff to my hair, frosted, <laughs> highlighted, I have, you know, curl iron, hot curls, but I've never counted, okay? <laughs> as hard as I try sometimes to get every hair in place, I've not counted them, okay? And he counts the very hairs of your head. I hope that's comforting to you to know how greatly you are loved of God. It says, we've had fathers after the flesh, which corrected us, okay, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? Verse 10, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he, meaning God, he for our profit. This is profitable for us. We can go through a whole lot more if we think, you know, I know there's that one commercial. What would you do for a Klondike bar, you know? And we, if we want a piece of chocolate as a child, you know, there's a, a lot of things that we do if there is profit in it for us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I want you to know we're in it to win it, and honey, it is profitable for you. I, I mean, you should get excited about that. You should have great relief and release to know that whatever God is allowing you to go through, there is a purpose for it, okay? Now, no chastening for the present, verse 11, seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nonetheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby. Now, 
we we know that when we exercise, okay, and I've noticed this uh, through doing aerobics and different things, strength training, that at the end, you know, when you've, you know, you've, uh, if you're doing a Roomba, you've danced until you fell on the floor in a pile of sweat and you're laughing and, and you know, and you feel like all strength has been drained from your body, yet you are actually stronger, physically stronger because of what you have exercised. Now, God is exercising this fruit of righteousness in us. And sometimes, I know, sometimes we're like, this is killing me. <laughs> Amen. And But it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Hebrews 12, 11. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight the paths of your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Honey, he wants you to be healed. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled okay now i want to show you i want to take you to isaiah 53 i've been showing you in the new testament honey god's plan has always god has had a plan from the foundation before the foundation of the earth okay <laughs> now we're going to go to isaiah 53 i want to show you what i feel is something very interesting Isaiah 53, it says in verse 5, now, I, I believe most of y'all know Isaiah 53 is about Jesus, okay? And uh, in my Bible, it says the prophet, uh, anyway, is he's showing the sufferings of Christ, okay? Now, the sufferings of Christ Here's what it says in verse 5, Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, our sin. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. You see, when the Lord is working in us, the first thing he does, he reconciles, he reconnects, he gets this sin out of the way. And uh, I believe, is it 57 or 59? Isaiah 59 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Okay. So what God does is first of all, he reconciles us unto himself. When, if we draw nigh unto God, he draws nigh unto us, you know, and it's a simple childlike prayer. You know, you just call, you know, you call on the Lord. And when, when I was a child, we would sing, Into my heart, into my heart, please come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. You just ask him to come into your heart. We cannot do these things. So we look unto Jesus. We call upon his name. He hears us. He has mercy on us. And he brings us into this complete, complete. You'll notice that First, he took away 
our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. He got the sin out of the way. This is a spiritual, okay? This is a spiritual thing, okay? Our sin problem. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That's in the soulish, the mind, the character, the intellect. He, we need to put on the mind of Christ, amen? We need to, he has mercy on us and he brings us peace. So many of us are troubled in our mind And what we need to do is go to Jesus and praise the Lord. As we praise the Lord, he inhabits the praise of his people. And when when we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with praise, then the peace of God that passes all understanding keeps our heart and mind through Jesus Christ. That's Isaiah 26, 3. It's, uh, I'll read it to you, Isaiah 26. 3, Isaiah 26, thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Hallelujah. That peace. We need peace, and it comes through praising him. It comes through worship. And I wanted you to see, I thought it was interesting, in uh, Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. He cleansed us spiritually, made us reconnected, reconciled back unto God. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And many believe that it was that crown of thorns, but I believe it was way more than that, that Jesus defeated utterly, okay, the the enemy. And it's and it says, and with his stripes, we are healed. Now, I want us to go to uh, first, uh, first Peter chapter 2. I hope you're following me. This is almost a Bible scramble tonight, but that's okay. (laughs) The good thing is you can put me on pause if you're on YouTube, and then you can (laughs) go back. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 19 through 25. Okay, it says, if I can see it here, For this is thankworthy, If a man, for conscience sake, toward God, endure grief and suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if when ye, if ye be buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently? But if, but if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, and when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to that judgeth to him. Okay, now let me read this. This is First Peter Two, verse 23, let me read it again. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him. He committed, he said, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. Committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. If we were healed at Calvary, then this is something that we just praise the Lord. No matter how bad our bodies are lying against the truth of God's word, we know that we are being healed as we are coming into him, and we are going to come in, I believe, we are going to come into divine health. 
I believe that God is going to strengthen these bodies. And I know many of you have been healed already. And I know that in Michigan, my, my daughter's uh, mother-in-law, she was dead for over 20 minutes, being 89 years old. They were about to give up on her. And yet God brought her back. And she, <laughs> within two weeks, she went from dead 89 years old, being back at her house on her own, writing her bills, doing her thing, living alone. <laughs> We're talking about what God can, he has, he is, and he will. We just have to believe this. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. By his own self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who his own own self bear our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we ye were healed okay now i want to take you to thank you jesus i want to take you to uh john 19 just for a moment saint john chapter 19 I'm not going to hurry. If you get tired, you go take a nap. And if you don't like what I'm saying, you can just you can just turn me off. And John 19 verse 30, and I'm praying that Jesus will help us all. Amen. Like Bob says, Lord help us all. <laughs> okay, verse 30. Now, we see that this is now you can read the whole thing there this is the crucifixion the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ right here in john 19 it said and when jesus verse 30 therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost his spirit went back to God, okay? It is finished. He completed the work of the cross. He completed. And as he completed, as he died, and as he was risen again, that is what God has in store for us. He has a plan for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to show you something I, I also, I think, is interesting. We went to Isaiah 53. Now go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And we see, I want you to see this because you that are going through things, you need to know you're not above your Lord. We, I mean, when I say that, you're like, yeah. But it says... Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, capital S. He was being led by the Holy Spirit. So just because you're going through things and you're going through testings and trials and you're being proved and the, it seems like the fires of life are raging, it doesn't mean that you've missed God. Please know that. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. And when the tempter came, the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now you'll notice he was hungry. This is a temptation in his body, okay? But he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, this is in Deuteronomy 8, 3. See, he, Jesus, he did use the word against the devil. He knew the three Hebrew children. They said, we're not careful to answer you, O king. Why? Because they knew. The reason we read the scriptures is so that we'll know how God feels about things because he's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He is God. The way he felt about things is the way he feels about things. The reason that he was 
He showed things in the Old Testament, literally, so that, and then in the New Testament, Jesus brought things in the natural, the natural things he brought to us so that we could understand spiritual things. God has been trying to communicate with us since the beginning. (laughs) That's why he made man, I believe. He made him for communication. You know, he didn't want to just rule everything. See, love is, is a choice. Love is a decision you make. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. I can't make you love me. Many a woman have tried to make, or a man has tried to make a woman love, but this is not anything that we can do. Amen. It's not love. God can't make us love him, but he's so lovable. The more we know him and the more we get to realize the truth of God's word, the more we fall in love with him. I'm telling you, as I have walked with the Lord over these years, I have fallen in love with him over and over and over again. I have fallen in in love when I see his love to creation, how, how he moves, and God will give us understanding. The things that we don't understand, we, we go to God with them, okay? So many times God gets blamed for things that he's not doing. A lot of times because the blame game has been going on since Adam and Eve, you know, we want to find something, someone to blame, and God is an easy target a lot of times. So we blame God for what's going wrong when a lot of times we are our own worst enemy. We created the situation. And I've told you about the the preacher that was going to minister in in a snowstorm and he wasn't using wisdom and he slid off the road into a pile of snow and he sat there and he said, Lord, I know you didn't get me into this mess but I'd appreciate it if you'd get me out. And these, he, all he saw was headlights. He saw these big guys yelled, gun it. And they pushed him out of the snow and he couldn't even stop to tell them, thank you. He just, God sent help and God will send you help. But you have to recognize a lot of times that if you're reading in the word of God, the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord again and again and again. <laughs> And we we do. Now, there's times that God allows things for our good to strengthen us. You know, I, sh- I showed you the other night about Joseph, how that the Lord was with him. He was with him in the pit. He was with him in the jail. He was with him. He was in training for reigning. But we also have to know that a lot of times we get in trouble. Some I like to say, we dig a pit with our mouth that our feet can't climb out of. But God is gracious. Just as when, Je- when Jesus was walking on the water and, and Peter started sinking and he said, Lord, help me, you know, and he did. So God will help you. He will show you what to do and how to do it. But we have to ask and submit ourselves to him. Now we see this was a temptation in his body. It says, verse 5, Matthew 4, verse 5, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. You think the devil don't know the word? It is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Now, this is, uh, you can look over to uh, Psalms 91, verse 11, okay? And he, this is where uh, that is said, that he'll, at least you dash your foot against a stone, he'll bear thee up. Well, Jesus answered again, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. We see this is a battle of our mind. Now, what we've got to do is we have got to pray 
and receive direction from the Lord and not just because somebody said, hey, let's go to Africa or, or whatever, uh, let, and y'all be praying for Bishop because he is going to Kenya. But just because somebody said it, you need to clear it with God before you up and do something. Are you listening to me? This is a battle in our mind. Things that seem right. There is a way that seemeth right unto men, but the end thereof is death. Amen. So we want, we want this battle of the mind, this battle of the body, and then we see, okay, uh, verse 8. This is Matthew 4, verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give unto thee if thou wilt fall down and worship. Okay? Now, this was, this was a spiritual battle. When it concerns worship, it's spiritual. And Jesus said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So we have to be careful that we're following the Lord and not following a man and not giving our service only unto the Lord. Amen. Now, of course, uh, in serving the Lord, I have scrubbed the toilets in the church. I have scrubbed the floors. I have went over and helped little widows. I have done many, many things in service of the Lord. But always, you must always put God first because according in the Song of Solomon, she said, uh, thank you, Lord. I, I turned right to it. She said, um, verse 5, Song of Solomon 1, 5. She said, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the uh, tents of uh, Keter, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I've not kept. Do you see this? So many people have backslidden doing church work, okay? They get so involved in working for God, they forget to worship him. They forget service unto the Lord, you, do you see how many people, come on, we've all gotten there. We've all been burnt out, okay? And God doesn't want you burnt out, okay? We're burnt to a crisp. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard I have not kept. Do you see yourself there? Honey, the Lord will show you. You know, uh, I, I instructed one little woman. Uh, there was a pastor, and I said, Honey, there's a snare there. And not always. Honey, please don't say that I'm not telling you to help your pastor. I'm a pastor, and I need plenty of help. But what I'm saying is be careful to keep God first. Okay, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Seek first your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that relationship, just as Jesus did, and it said if the books were written that should have or could have been written, the world itself would not hold them. So it wasn't like Jesus didn't go about doing good and healing and doing all these things. And all these things have their proper place. But you must seek God first and make sure you're doing exactly what he would have you to do. And I, I just, in my mind, I see so vividly as a child, I was watching my daddy's footsteps and we were going through the woods. I used to go hunting with my daddy and I would do my best to put my foot in his footsteps, you know, and I would follow after him, putting my foot where his foot was. And that's, that's the way I want to follow the Lord. I, I would, you know, like Moses said, Lord, if you don't go before me, 
send me not up. Amen. I want you to see this, that God deals with our spiritual, our sin problem first. He heals our mind and he heals our body and he brings us into this completion so that we can be complete, mature, amen, and come to the end of this rotten carnality, okay? I'm going to read one more scripture, and you know I've got more, but um, I, I really believe that this, this one, and by the grace of God, I haven't been watching the time, but I'm just trusting the Lord because i tell you the truth. Sometimes when we're, I know myself, when I get into prayer or I get studying, you know, wow. You know, I mean, hours, days, my kids laughed at me. They said one time the spirit of the Lord spoke to me to rest and I studied on rest for three months. And they said, <laughs> mom, you're the only one I know that, <laughs> I said, well, you know, I have to make sure I'm doing it right. You know, and God honors. It may be foolish to people, but the sincerity of your heart, God honors that, okay? And here it is in uh, Romans chapter 8. It says, and this is something that we all need to know. I've seen so many Christians. This is that fear that they get into. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, to them, okay, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ hath made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through this flesh, through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh. There's no condemnation. Hallelujah. God does not want you to be so afraid. I have seen so many. Uh, it seems like the best Christians that follow God with their entire heart, they're the most fearful of, of making them mad or doing something wrong. And it's not about that. He loves you. Once you realize that he loves you as, as a good daddy, and I could tell you stories about my natural daddy and how that he would get me out of trouble. <laughs> and having a good daddy like that, um, it really gives you a, a greater appreciation, a greater acknowledgement of what, our heavenly father, what a good father, a good daddy is like, okay? Because he's there to love you and protect you, okay? It says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is at enmity. The carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. He will make you alive by his spirit that dwells in you. It's that indwelling of Christ. And as he grows in you, and honey, just, just loving him and walking with him. Okay, let me, let me show you. I have to, <clears throat> let's go to John. 
I believe it's 1420. John 14. I want you to know this because I may have to go to a couple more places, so bear with me, but uh, you need to know this, okay? And read all of John 14. It is so beautiful. John 14, 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Honey, he's preparing a place. Know ye not you are the temple? That You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And as he's getting all of this carnality out of us, he is preparing a place for the indwelling of Christ. I believe the word of God is like a diamond. And, and we see, you know, you, you might hear the same message and, and the same scriptures and different light be shown out of it in different ways because God, there is no end, no end to learning about Jesus, no end to the knowledge of God. I believe that throughout eternity, we will be learning and loving and, and <laughs> becoming more of what God wants us to be. Amen. It says in uh, verse 20, okay, at that day, well, let me read 19. Yet a little while, and the world, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, excuse me. <sighs> John 14, 19. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Now, if you will let me show you two more scriptures, and I'm only showing you this so that you can go and study these things for yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it is so important for us to know these things. I want you to know he is all in all, okay? And it says, the last enemy, verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under his feet, it is manifest that he accepted which did all things under him which did put all things. So God, w Jesus is in God. We're in Jesus and he is doing all in all. And we are coming to this complete salvation, spirit, soul, and body. Can you see this? God is working in you to will and to do his good pleasure. And it's not always, it's almost never easy on our flesh. He said, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, for that, for he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under his, under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. One more scripture, and by God's grace, I'm letting you go, but I want to complete it as much as possible because it can never be completed. But I hope you're receiving this complete salvation. God, when he is done with it, God is bringing all into himself, okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Now, um, it'd probably be easier for me to just read it. It says, verse 16, Ephesians 1, 16, and, and I use this as a prayer. I've told you that. Uh, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, please, Lord, help us, 
that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And as you remember in Colossians 1, 26 and 27, that mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power that he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet. Do you see the same wording here in Ephesians as it was in Corinthians 15? 1 Corinthians 15. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, did I read you that, John 14? Did I read you that? Let me read it again, John 14, 20. Look how good God is just letting us fall right there. At that day, ye shall know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Christ in you, bringing us to that fulfillment, bringing us to that absolute, total spirit, soul, and body, absolute salvation. God wants us to be complete in him. Be ye therefore perfect, Matthew 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even, now I'm going to read that to you again. Be ye therefore perfect, Matthew 5, 48. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give you one more little golden nugget, okay? It says, Blessed, Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is love. If we're in love, we're in God. Amen. Having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood. Remember, it is finished. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery. I hope we got it tonight, that we would get a glimpse into the mystery, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one, in God, all in all in God, to gather together in one all things in Christ, both are which in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Hallelujah. Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And as we, I, I just, I'll tell you that is, when, when I read in John where it said, not that uh, I love you, but God himself loves you. That was such a revelation to me. That's in St. John 16. It said, uh, 1626, at that day, you shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the father for the father. 
himself loveth you, because you have loved me and have believed that I am come out from God. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This complete salvation, God has made it a free gift unto us. He suffered all these things to give us that life, that eternal life, that life and that more abundant, according to John 10, 10, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I love you. I hope that you can see and believe that God has intended for you to have complete and total salvation in him who loved us. Heavenly Father, write your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. O oh Lord God, we know, Father, that there is so much more for us to learn. And we're asking you to lead, guide, and direct us through your word and teach us Teach us thy ways, O Lord. Write your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Help us, O Lord. Speak life unto your children. Show them the paths of life and righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Good night.